Kurt Zoe did come into this tournament with one bye, and we'll see who's able to get the job done here between these two players. I do think that Ely is advantaged in this matchup. I think he has the right mixture of cheap removal, cheap interaction, and then uh, significantly more power as the game progresses. I liked his deck at Grand Prix, New Jersey. I still kind of like it now. It's an innovative take on a strategy that, you know, again, most people just don't see coming. And he gets that edge because people don't know exactly what's in his deck as Mondello is going to start with a Scalding Tarn here. Find himself a Volcanic Island, and we'll see how he starts things off. Now for Jake, being on the play is a big, big deal in this matchup because it puts a lot of pressure on Ely to have his cheap interaction. Some of his more expensive tools, things like True Name Nemesis or Snapcaster Mage on a removal spell, become a lot less potent when Ely's on the draw. The Cataxian Probe here from Mandela will show you a Force of Will, a Ponder, a Young Pyromancer, a Trinity Nemesis, along with a Polluted Delta, a Flood of Strand, and an Island. If you've never seen Cassius play, one, he's very skilled, but two, his decks are among the nicest you will ever see. Yes, I think Cassius is uh, very involved in Magic's secondary market, and as such, you see Guru Rans and Foil Onslaught fetches and Miscut shenanigans, all the rest. An attack here for two from Mandela. It's going to bring Cassis down to 18. Ely will sacrifice the Polluted Delta. Go down to 17 in the process. We'll see what Landy's going to search up and if he's got a play outside of Ponder, as there is one of those miscut dual lands. They are very strange looking. Well, this is the, the problem with Ely on the play here. If he ripped a bolt, he's in very good shape, but if his play is Ponder, then he's looking at turn two, Young Pyromancer, turn three, True Name Nemesis. So he'll probably take a lot of damage in the meantime. And if Jake has drawn any copies of Days, it gets pretty ugly for Ely. And it looks like Jake does have a copy of Days in his hand right now. It looks like he's considering Days in that ponder, but he will let it resolve. So Cassis will take a look at the top three cards, consult his hand before making a decision with this ponder. Yeah, finding a bolt or, or a fort bolt in this situation, pretty important. No fort bolt does not f match up appropriately with a daze. No. Innocent Blood would also play here. Baleful Strix, just something on turn two that impacts the board in a significant way. Young Pyromancer doesn't quite count if Ely is planning on playing Trinity Nemesis on the third turn of the game. But Ely also gets a lot of looks at a lot of spells, so it's possible Young Pyromancer could enable a turn three flurry of spells, and then that's, that's fine if you're on Ely's side of the table. Mondello going to sacrifice another Scalding Tarn, search up another copy of Volcanic Island. He's down to 16 already. We'll see what he can put together on the second turn of the game. Looks like it might be a copy of Young Pyromancer, and it is. So we'll see if this does resolve, as Cassis will consult his hand. And you can see the days right now in Jake's hand. The reason that he's playing this Young Pyromancer pre-combat, he knows that Ely has Force of Will. Perhaps Ely has a counterspell of his own. And if Ely decides to fight a battle over this, Jake can then daze it, the counterspell pre-combat, and get another prowess trigger out of his Swift Spear. Also, daze is completely busted. <laughs> That's another, you know, while we're here. Well, there is a day, there is a forceful, excuse me, removing a taxium probe. Now, Daze has the opportunity to win this war, and Mandela will take the opportunity to cast it. So, Dazing a forceful gets the job done. The Swiss Spear gets a little bit bigger. We'll deal because he gets another point of damage. Two instead of one, and we'll go back Ely's way as he is at 14, starting his second turn of the game. Now, a saving grace here for Ely, even though things have gotten off to a rough start here, is Jake's hand now is just lands and a ponder. Jake working with way more mana than he needs. And it's possible that he just does not find a way to answer True Name Nemesis, and Ely can win the game that way. Lightning Bolt's going to go after Young Pyromancer. Yeah, Mondello is, I suppose, flooding. For this deck, this is flooding. Oh, absolutely. Mandela will cast a Ponder. Trigger the prowess there on the Swiss Spear. He'll take a look at the top three cards. You could taxi a Probe, Delver Secrets, and a Bloodstain Mire. Those are the options there for Mandela on this Ponder. And he will consult his hand, looking at three lands there and two, vol two volcanic islands, one underground sea. I believe his draw set for the turn was Treasure Cruise, which mm -hmm. is about as good as it gets. But this Ponder is a bit awkward as Jake has no way to shuffle his deck. I'm sure in an ideal world he would like to just take the Cataxian Probe, go ahead and Treasure Cruise, but he's kind of got to commit to all or nothing here. There is a Probe. 
More cards in the graveyard. There's the hand of Tree Nemesis, a treasure cruise, a young pyromancer, and an island there for Cassis. Cassis already with four cards in his graveyard and a fetch land in play, so he's not far from treasure cruise either. Ondello will play and sacrifice that Bloodstained Mire, get a land out of his deck. There's Volcanic Island. Seems the coast is clear to resolve a treasure cruise. I believe he has all of his mana producing lands at this point. And you know, taking a look, this deck, of course, has a lot of fetch lands, but four Volcanics. He also has a bad lands thrown okay, in there. Okay, so he has one Yeah, he's got lands. one left. You don't see that often in this deck. Treasure crew is going to be cast and resolve. Pyroblast, Delver Secrets, Gataxian Probe, the card's drawn there. He'll cast another Gataxian Probe, all in an effort to make this Swiss beer as big as possible. Brainstorm the draw off of that. Now, this is a very good turn for Jake, but keep in mind, if Ely goes for it, uh, Jake has no answer for Trudene Nemesis. Jake has dealt a lot of damage to himself uh, off of his various fetch lands and Gataxian probes. And Ely will have the option of either controlling the ground for as long as he wants to, or just trying to kill Jake over the course of four turns with a Trudene Nemesis. Both very compelling lines of play. Yeah, the big question, as you mentioned, is is he willing to go for it? Given how many cards Mondello has just drawn and seen this past turn, it's likely that Days Enforceable is over there, and perhaps yeah. that scares Cassis a little bit. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's definitely a consideration. We know the coast is clear. He does not. The problem is that if Jake untaps, he'll have access to Pyroblast. And then Trinity Nemesis may not resolve for the remainder of the game. Yep. Because he's going to sacrifice his Flooded Strand, go down to eight. See what land he wants to get out of his deck now. He will go with a copy of Underground Sea. It's the option for a much more conservative line of play, which is just casting Treasure Cruise this turn, trying to find a removal spell, and hoping to match Jake card for card. There is an island. And it looks like he's going to pull the trigger on True Name. And he is correct in doing so. So True Nemesis is in play and asks protection from Jake Mondello. Yeah. A very gutsy play, but as things broke, the correct one. is going to start his turn off with a Brainstorm. So he will draw a Forked Bolt, a copy of Badlands, and a Polluted Delta. Two cards will have to go back here. You have to imagine it'll be two lands. Yeah, drawing a Fetch Land is beautiful here for Jake as he gets to set that two of his lands, shovel them away. So the ability to fetch for things as the game progresses. There is the Delta. He will sacrifice that going down to 10. Take the Volcanic he put back from Brainstorm. Again, these little points of damage, they are adding up, and Ely has the option of going on the offensive at a moment's notice. The Trinity Nemesis is not leaving the table. Mondell with a lot of options in his hand. Looks like he might be going the Delver route now. Got to get to the sky. So he will deploy that. And you see his hand with Ponder and Forked Bolt. Most importantly, that copy of Pyroblast. Cassis going to move on to his fourth turn of the game now. His turns have been pretty straightforward and simple. He's not doing as much as Mondello is, but he's still competing in this game. It's really impressive because uh, it almost feels like every turn of the game has been gone poorly for Cassis, but if he can contain Jake in the air by killing Delver of Secrets, there's not a lot of recourse on Jake's side of the table for the Strunay Nemesis. Here's a copy of Snapcaster Mage. Mondello going to take a look at the graveyard, see what Cassis could flash back, which looks like it might be a copy of Lightning Bolt. This is just great sequencing here from Ely. I mean, he, you know, this, you almost feel like Jake does, in fact, have to fight over the Snapcaster Mage. He can't afford to lose his Delver, but it opens up an opportunity here for Ely to resolve Treasure Cruise. So Ely will sacrifice his Scalding Tarn. Graveyard is loaded up. Now it's time for him to go for a cruise. So the entire graveyard is gone. And three cards are coming. And we'll see if he can find a lightning bolt now to take care of the Delver Secrets. Or, of course, Fork Bolt. Again, four bolts, three, th four lightning bolts, three Fork Bolts in his deck. As days are going to be revealed to the Delver Secrets. Pyroblast would also play. Yep. 
but nothing just yet. There's a ponder. That will be resolving. Mondell will look at a ponder, a Delver, and a copy of Young Pyromancer. See how he wants to separate things here. Three spells, including a ponder, and Jake without the ability to shuffle his deck, I have to assume he's keeping these cards in some order. It's tough to pass this up, I think. Especially with one, you know, Delver of Secrets is also nice in this spot as you're knocking Cassis down to four. He, he didn't demonstrate an ability to kill it last turn. The only incentive to possibly shuffle here is, is Jake may be on the search just for Lightning Bolt because he can generate a kill that way. But he can set this in such a way that he deploys threats and then ponders after the fact. And that gives him a ton of looks at Lightning Bolt as well. It looks like he's going to keep with the ponder, and he will. Young Pyromancer the draw. Hasn't played a line yet this turn, either. He's going to get in here with the Insectile Aberration. Cassis is going to go down to four, dangerously low against Blue-Red. There is Young Pyromancer looking to overload the Tree Nemesis. That's gumming up the ground. Now here's a four pull that's going to go upstairs. Cassis is going to go down to two, and Elemental Token is going to come into play. We're going to send it back Cassis's way. And this is a really important four pull here for Jake, as it means that even if Ely is able to find a removal spell for the Insect Dial Aberration, he still has a lethal attack. There's a young power mancher there for Cassis. This is a Cabal Therapy. A little bit of fun to be had. Elemental tokens coming in shortly. And we'll see what Cassis wants to name here. As Mondell is going to cast a copy of Days. This is just going to generate another token. It looks like Cassis has no interest in paying. Ely knew it was there from the Delver reveal. Mm -hmm. So both players working with the information. Ely would likely name Days if the Cabal Therapy resolved. Jake knows this. So no reason to not cast it and just generate another token. We'll see what Cassis is going to do now to follow up with. See the elemental token situation getting sorted out here for both players. And now a flashback of the Cabal Therapy. This is essentially free. It replaces the, the trigger from the Young Power Mancer replaces itself. Now there's Fork Bolt to take care of the Delver. Now the Elemental Token's going to come into play. So a nice job there from Cassis to get the board back to parity. No great attacks we made, it looks like, in this situation. I'm not sure if True Nemesis wants to come rumbling across here. That's the one attack that Ely has access to. And it's at that point, you're basically conceding to any removal spell. But you may be conceding to any removal spell anyway. It depends on the power of Ely's hand, which we don't have a good look at right now. But if, if Ely has more action to follow up with, I think he should just sit back on his heels here and give himself the time to deploy his, his cards. Here's a ponder. Take a look at the top three cards, Swiss Spear, Delver, and a Polluted Delta. This is tough. I mean, this almost feels like a shuffle to me. The creatures do not seem that valuable. The Delver is, doesn't flip, unless you're also willing to keep a fetch light and then try again. You can't attack for lethal this turn, because one of the tokens that Jake just generated has summoning sickness. Yep. So you can only knock neatly down to one if you keep a Swift Spear. I think you have to shuffle. Yeah, I just don't think the creatures are very valuable at this point. If Jake had Delver of Secrets plus the ability to flip it with another spell in the top three, I think at that point you can make an argument for keeping. But here, uh, Jake, I, I think, can sense that the board's getting locked up, that Ely has more action to follow up with, and he just needs to hunt for Lightning Bolt or Fork Bolt. Yeah, I think chances, I just think the chances are of a random card being better. You know, you're going to run into a, a lot of different cards here, a lot of redraws in the situation, other brainstorms and ponders and cruises. There is a brainstorm there. Yep. Let's get you a little deeper into your deck. 
Just another trigger for Young Pyromancer. You can just take a look at three cards. Yep, there's a Lightning Bolt. There's two of them now, so that's going to get the job done right there. Jake Mondell is going to win game number one here over Ely Cassis. Blue or Delver will be up a game here against Grixis Control. As these players will move to the sideboards, and we will do the same, we'll start with Cassis. Two copies of Pyroblast, two copies of Hydroblast, a Zoran Orb, a Null Rod, a Smash the Smith of Rings, a Surgical Extraction, a Sabo's Web, a Nile Spellbomb, a Mountain, two copies of Massacre, a Graph Digger's Cage, and a Recoil. Ooh, Lally. Uh, <laughs> so, I really like the two copies of Pyroblast and the two copies of Hydroblast for this matchup. Just, you know, I think those are among the best cards you can just have in your sideboard against Blue Red Delver. I think the one copy of Zoran Orb is reasonable as well, as is the one copy of Nile Spellbomb. On this side here from Mandela, more traditional sideboard and two surgical extractions, three Pyroblast, one Hydroblast, four Cabal Therapies to go along with those young Pyromancers, of course. There's also a Graph Trickers Cage, an Electricery, a Smash Smith of Rings, a Sulfuric Vortex, and a copy of Endillion Click. Of the bunch, I actually like the Electricery a lot in this matchup. Yeah, if he knows exactly what Ely's working with, uh, definitely good in this matchup. And I think, of course, the Pyroblast and the Hydroblast, we're going to want to see those two. Yeah, the, the, the cards that I think are, maybe they come in, maybe they don't, are the four copies of Cabal Therapy. Ely, not a combo deck, which is typically where you bring in the Cabal Therapies, but uh, still a control deck with some high impact cards like Treasure Cruise and Trinity Nemesis. Maybe Jake wants to bring it in. And the one copy of Sylvuric Vortex, Ely's deck is light on life gain, but the Grixis color combinations typically struggle with Sulfuric Vortex. They can't get enchantments off the table very easily. And if you saw that game, Ely was trying to kind of turtle up and then eventually overpower Jake. And if a Vortex resolves, uh, that play pattern becomes a lot tougher to execute. Well, those are the options that are available for both players, and we'll see which ones they do employ. As Cassis is already shuffling up and has cyborged, so you have to imagine he's been here before. But while we do wait, we will talk about the feature match area on twitch.tv slash SCG Live. You can join it today. Yeah, the chat is back, though if you're not a subscriber, you are in slow-mo chat, which means it posts only once every two minutes, but with a subscription, which is only $4.99 a month, you have access to unlimited posts inside of the stream and access to custom emoticons and badges like yours truly, Cedric Phillips, Matthias Hunt, our penguin, and our slow play turtle. We'll have new ones for you guys as well coming soon. We'll always be updating those, and if you do have any sweet ideas for them, we're always looking to hear them, so post them in the chat, and we can get to work on those custom emoticons. Do join the Feature Match area today, twitch.tv slash SCG Live, and we thank you guys for tuning in anyway as we do prepare for game number two here between Cassis and Mondello. Cassis will be on the play here. Good and draw I, for Mondello, the first game. It was a very good draw, even though it was a little land heavy. He did curve out very nicely with a daze. It's a good opening against Cassis' deck. Anytime you get to daze, it's a force of will. You probably got a, a potent opening against your opponent. I think that game does play out a lot differently with Ely on the play, though. I'm not sure. You know, my, my assumption is that playing the draw in this matchup is pretty important, but I don't think it's, you know, kind of the, the end-all, be-all. Well, post-board, it gets a lot fuzzier because both decks have access to Hydroblast and Pyroblast, so they have cheap ways to keep up when they're on the draw. I think game one is where it's most pronounced who's on the play and who's on the draw. Mondello a little unsure of how he does want to sideboard here, so he's going to consult the 15 for just a moment before shuffling up and getting ready to go. Again, Jake Mondello, former Legacy Open champion. We were in Syracuse during Season 3 last year, getting the job done with Charles Soltai there. For Cassis, well, his reputation in Legacy really is a very good one. A Syracuse area player, very innovative in his decks that he does play, and this is just another one of those. I, I do really appreciate the legacy and vintage players who just don't take things for granted, who are willing to explore the card pool and find narrow cards for particular metagames. Uh, most people, I think, with those kind of formats, just default to playing with the good cards, which good cards in quotes, which is a fine strategy. But I think there's a lot of edge to be gained by uh, knowing, for example, that uh, one copy of Zoran Orb is really potent against a lot of aggressive strategies, or a copy of Recoil is a really low opportunity cost of fighting decks that pack a lot of expensive permanents. And, you know, you need to have that kind of knowledge of the format to even be aware of those cards, much less know when the right time is to be playing them. And I do think of, boy, oh boy, that Zoran Orb for Cassis. He said in Grafton, New Jersey, that was very useful for him all weekend long. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so good against aggressive decks, and Cassis' deck is not exactly robust against Press of Progress, and Zoran Orb is as good as it gets, because most Press of Progress strategies are aggressive to begin with, and then all your lands are gone. Good taxing probe here for Cassis. 
You see Mondello's hand, two Delver's secrets, a ponder, a treasure cruise, a young pyromancer, along with a volcanic island, and a copy of Bloodstained Mire. Another very solid hand. Can't send that one back. Though, with no counter spells, at least for the time being, Cassis is free to do whatever he wants. Cassis does have Cabal Therapy in his deck. Though, I don't know if it would remain in his deck in this matchup. Maybe it does. But it seems like the therapies are just much better versions of, or much worse versions, excuse me, of the Pyroblast and Hydroblast he's bringing in. A Pluto Delta and a passing of the turn there for Cassis. So no Cabal Therapy on turn number one. Here is a Delver Secrets from Mondello. We're going to go back Ely's way. Ely will sacrifice his Pluto Delta. Get himself a Volcanic Island. Let's see if there's an end of turn lightning bolt. Perhaps a brainstorm. Something to that effect here from Ely. Well, something's got to be going on because I don't think he would have all cast a Cabal Therapy unless he had something to do with a mana. Uh, I mean, maybe he wanted to give himself the option of drawing something like Ponder, but... Now there is Lightning Bolt. Very rarely do you see a control deck do that sort of play unless there's something to do with the one mana left over. There's another Volcanic Island. And I'll just pass the turn back. We'll Cassis over to Mondello. Mondello will draw a copy of Lightning Bolt. There's Bloodstained Mire. This is another copy of Delver's Secrets. And simply a passing of the turn. Cassis, the Brainstorm. That will resolve. So three cards coming, and of course, two will go back. No fetch land in play just yet, so he will draw one of these cards. And if Cassis is able to kill this Delver, you can sort of see the difference between the play and the draw. Uh, even if Jake's able to resolve Treasure Cruise, if Ely can keep his life total high, he's got a pretty big edge as we move towards the mid-game. Underground C. And a Ponder. He's just going to take a look at the top three cards. Very quickly put them back and shuffle. Did not like what he saw. Cassis also gave me one of my most compelling matches in any Legacy Open I ever played in. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was Burn v, v High Tie, which is not something you would anticipate being having a lot of play to it, but as it turns out, it did. Perhaps a little more than you thought. Yeah. Mystery card coming here for Cassis. He got me in three games. Sure. But it was a really sweet The story game. never ends with you winning. No. A Gataxian probe revealed there to Delver's Secret. So Insectile Aberration has shown up. And perhaps we'll get a better look at Cassis's hand here. I'm sure Mondello would like to know. But he will start by attacking for three. Cassis down to 14. Mondello will sacrifice the Bloodstained Mire. He's going to go down to 19. And there is a Volcanic. So we'll see what Jake can put together here on the third turn of the game. Kept a solid opener. Gataxian Pro was certainly helpful to let him know how he wants to navigate things moving forward. I think the, the real tipping point here is the fact that the Insect Alberation flipped and survived. Uh, I think that if Cassis has another removal spell for it, then uh, Jake might have been in a lot of trouble. But as it stands, it looks like things are going fine. Yeah, Hydro Blast is going to take care of that young Pyromancer. Here's Gataxian Pro. Cassis's hand, two Force of Wills, a Treasure Cruise, and a Snapcast of Mage. A little surprised to see Force of Wills still in the deck? No, I think that Cassis is, is fine. It, there's two things going on. One, he really wants to keep Jake off of Treasure Cruise. And two, he has so many powerful cards of his own to push through. You're happy to Force of Will to push through True Name Nemesis, for example, in a lot of spots, or your own Treasure Cruise. So uh, Jake has enough high-impact stuff that I think it... And Ely also has enough high-impact stuff he's trying to push through. I think it's fine. Oh, here's a brainstorm. I would also say it's probably a higher priority for Ely to get the three copies of Cabal Therapy, the one DAC Faden out of his deck, than it is for the Force of Wills. So uh, since I identified five or six cards that he wants to bring in, a couple copies of Force of Will probably stay in if I was in Ely's seat. I would not want all four, but two or three I would be happy with. Sure.
no insult meant to the greatest thief in the multiverse, but I don't think this is his matchup. It feels insulted. <laughs> I'll speak for him. There's a cabal therapy. Okay. I'm not too surprised to see this in. He's going to name Treasure Cruise. See the cards that are left over there from Mandelo. A pyroblast, a fork bolt, a lightning bolt, and a ponder. A lot of removal in the hand. But definitely some holes in this, in this hand. For Absolutely. Sure. So therapy's done resolving because he has the information, knows the coast is clear to resolve a treasure cruise. And you can see how good of a treasure cruise deck he is here. Yeah, I mean, he can, he can keep up in terms of pure velocity with anything that Jake's doing. And again, his spells are a lot more high impact. I mean, he's drawing Trinity Nemesis, Snapcaster Mage. Now, you know, his graveyard is temporarily removed, but he can fill it back up. Three cards coming here for Cassis. I have to imagine he's feeling pretty good about things right now. Certainly if he can follow up with a removal spell for the Insect Isle Aberration, this is a spectacular turn. Flooded Strand will be sacrificed. You see he's going to go down to 13. An island is what he's searching up. Perhaps another Blast Effect is in order to get that Delver of Secrets off the table. But he will just simply go with a preordain. Yeah, one copy in this list as a 13th cantrip alongside Ponder Brainstorm and Gitaxian Crew. So he will scry two. And then consult the hand as well. One's going to stay on top, one to go to the bottom. We'll draw a card and fast turn back. That's a solid turn there for Cassis. That was a great turn. I mean, short of killing the. Insight Dial Operation, that's about as good of a turn as you can ask for. I was a little bit surprised to see the Therapy still in Ely's deck, but it's possible the philosophy is, well, if I keep Jake off of Treasure Cruise, he can't beat me any other way. He's never going to beat me card to card. Ponder here from Mondello. Going to keep here. Swift Spear the draw. Bloodstained Mire. There's Swift Spear. Looking to get some threats on the table here is Jake. We know that Cassis does have force of will somewhere around his hand. Again, he did cast a brainstorm, so perhaps he doesn't have it at this point. He'd have two force of wills at some point during the last turn. Wouldn't surprise me if he kept one. Two seems like a lot. Going into the red zone. There's an attack for four, because he's going to go down to nine. Now what's a little bit scary here is Cassis does know about Fork Bolt and Lightning Bolt in Mondello's hand, so his life total is getting a little bit low at this point. Pyroblast as well. Yeah. Which means the, uh, the ideal line of play here of Snapcaster Mage into Lightning Bolt may not work unless Ely is willing to use Forcible to push it through. Now that is the concern right now for Cassis. He is playing Grixis deck. It is very unlikely that he can gain any life. That's part of the reason he had Zoran Orb in his deck at Grand Prix, New Jersey. This is a Snapcaster Mage. Mandela will sacrifice his Bloodstained Mire very quickly. Yeah, I had to imagine this is worthy of a Pyroblast. Jake will grab himself a Volcanic Island. Cassis will wait patiently. Hoping that he can win this war, as there is the Pyroblast. Force of Will, removing Force of Will, will bring Cassis down to eight. That means Snappy will resolve. Lightning Bolt will be the target there. Lightning Bolt will take care of the Insectile Aberration. Do Cassis have a way to get that off the table? Well, there is a Zoran Orb. Oh, yeah. And now there <laughs> is a Scalding Tarn. Oh, yeah. And that's a way for him to get himself out of this situation. So Cedric and I played a match. I was playing Burn and Ely, uh, excuse me, Cedric was playing Ely's deck at Grand Prix, New Jersey. We played a match for fun. I won the match two games to one. The game in that match that I lost 
Zeranor was heavily featured. It was quite good. <laughs> Despite my best efforts to throw the game away, I could not. Yeah, <laughs> Zeranor makes it really hard. Ely going to tap it out of mana. That's a... <laughs> that's a synergy. You know, you know what that is? That is good deck building that's, right there. That's what that is. Three cards coming here. A little life gained on the way out the door for that land. Two, your, turn your underground scene to two mana land for your treasure cruise. My goodness. Electric the draw there from Mondello. Woo! <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Cool me off! Yeah. It's not chilly in Philly anymore. Oh, wow. I was about to say, Ely is definitely at risk of getting burned out here. I mean, Jake with, with Fort Bolt and Lightning Bolt and a piece of pressure in play, it might look like a repeat of game one where Ely just kind of took too much damage early on before he could stabilize. But now, I would say, with Zoranorb in play, he's got a lot of time. Mandela's going to turn up the heat here. Like Trickery will take care of Snapcaster Mage. There's a bolt of the lightning variety. And also a forked one as well, which is going to cause Cassis to have to sacrifice a land to stay alive. Now he needs an answer for this Swift Spear, but he did just draw three cards. So I'd be surprised if he can't find one as he's a two. There's a young Pyromancer. This is a Ponder, Trigger. Elemental token, take a look at the top couple. So I played back when Zernor was legal in standard, then called type two. Okay. It alongside Felton's Cane are the only cards in Magic's history that were made more powerful by them being restricted. Because people often just incorrectly played four copies of Zuranorb in their decks. Oh, sure. Zuranorb was so popular. Sure. But having one copy of Zuranorb in your deck is totally fine. It's going to be good in a bunch of spots. But it is on pronounced diminishing returns. Would you say the second one is not very good? The second one's not really good. Oh, okay. We talk about the second Corsair Crucifix and Standard not being very good. The second Zuranorb is far worse than the second Corsair Crucifix. This is true. This is true. Felton's Cane, the first one's horrible. But at least you're not playing four anymore. You're only playing the one. <laughs> Magic Dragon, much simpler time. <laughs> Mandela quickly going to draw a card. Because he's at a virtual eight life right now. Here comes the Swift Spear. Makes for an interesting situation here. I mean, the most conservative thing to do is just throw a, a token in front or sack a land. Yeah. There is an argument for the double block here. And a removal spell makes this go poorly, and it does right now. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah. Because that, that Pyroblast Jake's allowed to cast no matter what, because it only looks if the thing is blue on resolution, not targeting. So Lightning Bolt would have been kind of the worst case scenario there, but Pyroblast is fine. Well, perhaps we go for another cruise here. Sure. Because he's getting very deep into his deck. You saw that play with, with Pyroblast last turn. Counter target spell if it is blue, or destroy target permanent if it is blue. It means you can still cast it. And you, if you wonder why Pyroblast and Hydroblast are in all these sideboards except for instead of Red Elemental Blast or Blue Elemental Blast, this is the reason why. The deck wants to just be able to cast things at a moment's notice because of Treasure Cruise, so it doesn't want to be tied up with having to have a target into play. It's a small thing, but it, it did come up in that scenario, for example, where Jake was able to trade off his board, where if that was Red Elemental Blast, he would have just been stuck. Lightning Bolt playing the role of Stone Rain there. This is he has to sacrifice a land. But he goes back up to one, not to die. And Pyromancer is here for both players. But Cassis is the player with cards in hands, not Mondello. Uh, I think Ely has five cards right now or something like yeah. that. And at a virtual nine life, given that Zurin Orb. There is a copy of Hydroblast. This will trigger the young Pyromancer. Elemental Token will come into play. Mondello's young Pyromancer will die, and Cassis will attack here for two points of damage. Mondello's going to go down to 14. He will draw a card, another copy of young Pyromancer. One of the benefits of playing Blue Red Delver, it is very difficult to flood out when you don't have very many lands in your deck. 15 or 16 lands in these lists. And Mondello playing 16, six of them that actually do tap for mana, and then the rest are fetch lands. There's a copy of Dak Faden. I spoke too soon. The greatest thief in the multiverse <laughs> will draw two cards and allow Cassis to discard two cards. Naturally has the foil deck fade in. Oh, well, duh. Yeah, no big deal. 
He can afford miscut dual lands. I'll put the foil deck fade, and it's too rich for my blood. I That's have, an expensive card. I didn't say it wasn't. <laughs> I'm just saying, of course, he has it. Here's an attack for three. Cassis is moving along beautifully now. Mandela will draw a card. He will think briefly. But oh. Cassis is coming from all angles. BTW, very small mistake here. But I believe that Ely should have preemptively sacked the land there. Sudden Shock, huh? Exactly. Yeah, your Sudden Shock is always on your radar. I, but seriously, what's the only card at this point that could possibly kill Ely, right? That is the one. That's the one card. That's the one. It's a small thing, but Ely would be heartbroken <laughs> if Jake were to simply flip that off the top of his deck. Been dealing click here for Mandela off the top. Treasure Crew is going to go to the bottom. Pyroblast, Young Pyromancer, and a mystery card there will be left in Cassis' hand. He will untap his four lands and take a draw step. When you've sudden shocked people out of some outrageous games, it then becomes on your radar. See, I have not. Yeah. I've never been there. I would like to go there. It sounds like a fun place. Lightning Bolt going to take care of Vendillion Click. Little Dak Fade in action here. Going to mill two cards Mondello. Just see what's going on. Yeah. Check out the action. Hey, gets, uh, that's just getting information there. Yeah. I like that a lot. Here's a tre treasure <laughs> cruise. I'll pyroblast that, thanks. And how about we head to a third game here between Ely Cassis and Jake Mondello? Is Cassis able to tie things up? Yep. Resolved three treasure cruises, had a Zuran Orb in play, Dak Fade in. Pretty normal game of Legacy. For him, it is. It is. That's for sure. This deck is a riot. So what's informative there, if you're on Jake's side of the table, if you didn't have Sulfuric Vortex in your deck before, I think you should have Sulfuric Vortex in your deck now. Oh, yeah. It's already, I think it's already good enough to play, even just on what, if, what Ely's deck appears to be. Now that you've seen Zuran Orb, I think it's got to come in. I'm glad to agree with you, through and through. And you see Jake went back to the sideboard immediately, so looks like he might be coming to the same conclusion here. Cassis also going to take a look at some things as players have more information now that they are working in a sideboarded game. Things yep. certainly do change. And I remember the match that I played against Ely's deck. The deck that I had in game two had nothing to do with the match. You know what I mean? I, I, I was prepared for an entirely different deck than what Ely brought to the table. I, I changed, I think, around seven cards when you and I played, went from game two to game three. And, and Jake may be doing the same thing here. Ely Cassis, no one is a... Very storied deck builder in Legacy. Patrick Shapen, a pretty popular deck builder as well, and his remastering of Next Level Magic is now available. Yeah, this should be awesome. It's the 2015 edition, up to date with new examples and some new text available in paperback form, which it has not been for close to a year now, and ebook as well. StarCityGames.com slash NLM to order your copy of the game today. Pro Tour champion, Hall of Famer, second place at the World Championships, and uh, in my opinion, Magic's best writer of all time. Uh, hard to argue. Hard to argue. Brings top level work every single week. I, I don't even know how he does it because that's, you know, that's a busy guy. He's got a lot on his plate right now. And to just regularly crank out 3,000, 4,000 word masterpieces, super informative, fun to read. Uh, I don't know. I literally don't know how he does it. Finger is always on the pulse. The man loves magic. That's true. I mean, that counts for a lot, but a lot of people love magic and no one else does what he does. That's true. That is definitely true. StarCityGames.com slash NLM for more information about the 2015 edition of Next Level Magic. Game number three, about to be underway here between Cassis and Mondello. About 10 minutes to get it done in, so these players might have to play a little bit of speed magic. Ely's deck is capable of killing faster than uh, you might imagine. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he can flip the script and start beating down pretty fast, especially if... Trinity Nemesis is involved. He's only got one copy, but he looks at a ton of cards as we've seen over the last two games. Perhaps the mighty Zorn Orb will show back up. We will see. Mondello and Cassis will both keep their opening hands. Mondello will go down to 19 via Scalding Tarn, get himself a volcanic island, and we'll see how he wants to start things off, either with a creature or a cantrip. It's a Delver's Secrets. One could argue the best creature in the matchup. So you go back Cassis's way. He will play a copy of Innocent Blood. Yes! <laughs> Your day's starting off nice. Oh, You're I loving love everything that's happening here. 
It's a removal spell that gets untargetable creatures and can't get Hydro or Pyro blasted. Yes! Gataxian Probe here for Mondello. We'll see two Treasure Cruises, two Lightning Bolts, along with a Ponder and a Flooded Strand. That's a really good hand in this matchup. That's a really good hand. Because all Ely's trying to do is, is get to the late game, and that's a hand equipped to get to the late game. A lot of removal. A Ponder here for Mondello will show a bad Lands of Polluted Delta. And a Gataxian Probe. He will take the Polluted Delta, play it, and pass the turn back. Over to Cassis we go. We know he's got a land to play in Flooded Strand, so he will deploy that. And now a Ponder. Mondello very quickly sacrificing his Polluted Delta. Perhaps he will Pyroblast this. And you can see the bottom card of Jake's deck there as he was shuffling was the Sylphuric Vortex. I don't know if he had it for game two, but he certainly has it for game three. There is the Pyroblast to go after the Ponder. That will resolve. Mondello going to quickly untap and draw a card. Monastery Swift Spear is what he's found. He will deploy that. Follow up with the Gataxi Improve. Down to 14, Mondello will go. And we'll see if Cassis has a response here. Cassis will sacrifice his Flooded Strand. Yeah, I think in response to the Prowess Trigger here, he wants to make an effort to kill the Swift Spear. Last call to sign up for the Modern Premier IQ. Last call to sign up for the Modern Premier IQ. And this is an attempt. Again, with the, with the Prowess Trigger on the stack, Lightning Bolt will resolve. Attack Pro will show a Brainstorm as the new card. Lightning Bolt and two copies of Treasure Cruise, the old cards. Mondello will draw his own card. It's a daze. And now that's a Treasure Cruise. That's an early one of those. I mean, he has cards in his graveyard left over. Yeah. And it's turn three. Two Bloodstained Myers among the cards drawn there for Jake. He will play one of them and pass the turn back. A Cecil draw. He has four cards in his graveyard at this point. Let's make it a fifth one there with Kataxi and Pro. We'll see what Mondello's working with there. Young Pyromancer, a Lightning Bolt, along with the Daze and a couple of lands. Kataxi and Pro, subtle, but a really important draw here as Cassis is trying to get to a Treasure Cruise of his own. So a free clan ship here is excellent. Both these players have no trouble working their way through the deck. So here's a Brainstorm now. Cassis will have to put two cards back, perhaps in search of a land here. One of the fetching variety, the best of the bunch. Yeah, he doesn't want to run this treasure cruise into a daze, of course, so. No land to be found, just going to have to pass the turn back. That could be bad news there for Cassis. Mondello very quickly sacrificing his Bloodstained Mire on his upkeep. Get a land out of his deck. Looking for some action. Uh, Cassis, you know, uh, Feels like maybe he's a little bit behind because of the resolve treasure cruise on Jake's side of the table, but I think it's so important for him to just not be under pressure that that's, that's really what the game's about. Electricery the draw. This is a copy of Hydroblast. A daze will go after the Hydroblast. And now we'll see a force of will removing treasure cruise. So an exchange of resources there. That can see he does win. And again, that, that looks a little ugly, you know? It, it, it was Daze and Young Pyromancer for a lot of cards, but uh, Jake's hand now, nothing going on. Just a Lightning Bolt and a lot of trickery. Pretty easy for Ely to play around. Mm, that Kataxi Probe showing the coast is clear, so let's cruise. Cassis will Dell 7. Figure out what he wants to leave in the graveyard for Stabcaster Mage, and it's a Hydro Blast and a Lightning Bolt. The rest will go away. Three cards here for Cassis. He has found a land in Polluted Delta. Now he'll play a Ponder. So he'll get to look at three more cards. He will keep very quickly and pass the turn back. Mondello will sacrifice his Bloodstained Mire. And get a Volcanic Island. Game going very well now for Cassis. 14, a healthy life total, and we're working ourselves well into the mid-game. It's cool because these decks have a lot of the same cards, but it is clear who's in what role. Ely is absolutely the control deck here. Bloodstained Mire, just the passing of the turn. Cassis will play a Scalding Tar, and he'll pass the turn back over to Mondello. So perhaps a little draw-go action here as Mondello draws a Brainstorm. Cassis has no interest in letting that resolve. Pyroblast will take care of that. Mondello will pass it back. Cassis will take a draw. Jake's hand is so bad, and he has a Shuffler in play, that I like fighting over the Brainstorm. As do I. You know, he's got lands, you know, he's got an electricery. Those cards aren't up to very much, so. 
Brainstorm there, pretty close to Treasure Cruise, and that's definitely worth a Pyroblast. And there's a copy of Treasure Cruise yet again. Jake has a Pyroblast for that, and Cassie says, how about a Force of Will? And this is part of the reason you see him leave Force of Will in the matchup, as you mentioned, to force through Treasure Cruise. He's got more power in his deck. He's willing to take in these two-for-ones on himself sometimes to just keep his life total high, keep the board clear, or push through his Treasure Cruises. You've seen it all happen in this game. Here's a Ponder as well, because he's going to keep with the Ponder. You can see how it's so easy for him to get through his deck. That's why he's able to play one of his like Zern or like Dak Faden, because he sees so many cards. Yep. A little play, young Pyromancer now. Chain Lightning the draw there from Mondello. Lots of red removal. And while 11 might seem like a lot of life, Cassis is in danger of getting burned out here. Definitely a thing that can come up here. Uh, Iliasek does not have a ton of counter spells. He doesn't really have ways to gain life outside of the Zuran Orb. He doesn't win the game particularly quickly. And so just a lot of burn spells can be a way to get, it, get him. Now, if he finds that Zuran Orb, I think he's a huge favorite to win the game. Yeah. But that's why I think the Vortex might be Jake's most important card post-board. If that gets into play, it's really tough on Cassis' deck. Let's see how Mandela wants to start here. He's going to go with the Chain Lightning. So he says, all right, I'm down to eight. Is it time for another burn spell? Well, Mandela will just simply pass the turn back. Here's a Brainstorm. Trigger Young Pyromancer, Elemental Token. Now three cards coming. Cassis with a Fetch Land in play. Keep in mind that Cassis is aware of the Electricery, too. Mm -hmm. Two cards do go back. Cassis is happy enough with those cards that he will send into the red zone. This Electricery will be overloaded. We'll see if it does resolve, and it will. So the creatures are gone. He's going to sacrifice a Scalding Turn. He's down to seven. Volcanic Eye on the land that is searched up. And he will follow up now with the Young Pyromancer. Now a Brainstorm. So three more cards. And of course, two will quickly go back as we are under three minutes here. There's Treasure Cruise. It's not hard for him to do. Yep. And I think he's going to be very aggressive trying to leverage his Junk Power Mancer as most Blue Red Delver decks only have the one copy of Electricery in the sideboard. So he knows the coast is most likely clear. A Monastery Swift Spear. And now it looks like a copy of Forked Bull will take care of Young Pyromancer and an Elemental Token, or at least try, but a Hydro Blast will get in the way. And now here comes the Swift Spear that's and a, a simple Shump Block. That's a really bad sign there for Jake if Ely was not willing to Hydro Blast the Swift Spear in the first place. It means his hand's completely loaded and he does not care about a random creature. Step one is to attack. Four points of damage will come across. It's even up now at sevens. There is Tree Nemesis. That'll put the brakes on the Swift Spear. Mandela will draw. It's a copy of Days. Not the right time for that. All Mandela can do is pass the turn back. We will go Cassis's way. Cassis will draw. He will send in with everybody. Swift Spear will jump in front of the young Pyromancer in a lightning bolt. We'll probably go upstairs to make the Swift Spear big enough to live. A lightning bolt will be revealed there by Cassis, and that will get the job done. Ely Cassis, with his Grixis control deck, will take care of Jake Mondello playing Blue Red Delver just in the nick of time, two games to one. And I think the most important thing is post-board, Cassis has access to Hydroblast and Pyroblast, and that just allows him to weather the storm of the early game so much more effectively than he, can, he could game one. It seemed like every time Ely was casting a Pyroblast or a Hydroblast, it was a backbreaker for Jake. 